Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple quick stories, and, and I'll kind of give you a context. Um, I, once upon a time, ran a regulatory agency. It was a state regulatory agency, and I, during a campaign, heard all about the regulations on charitable gambling. I thought, how bad could they be? And I showed up in this small industry in North Dakota, dealing mainly with minimum wage workers, had a 500-page, 300-page uh, book of regulations. And I brought the young man down who was responsible, and I said, who do you think reads these? He kind of shrugged his shoulders, and I opened him up, and I said, why do you have this one? He said, because some um, person up in Kandu, North Dakota, did this and we thought we needed a regulation. And every time we did it, my, my realization was those regulations were written to write a perfect world. We're never gonna have a perfect world through regulation. So, so what we're trying to do is get down to the essential. And that's what I told him, I said, take these back, give me what's essential for our doing our job to maintain the integrity of charitable gaming. He came back and it was down to about a third of what it was. And, and it's that kind of analysis that we need to undergo. And we've been talking a lot about new regulation. There's two issues with new regulation. Number one, we don't do it quickly enough, going to your point, um, uh, which is, let's take, for instance, the 1232 tank car issue we have now. We're probably going to see a regulation retrofitting 1232s when, the, when DOT should have been engaging earlier on to avoid that misstep. So now, because we didn't have regulation, people have made investments that are gonna to need to be retrofitted. Okay, so not getting regulation done on time is, can be just as injurious to the uh, economy as getting regulation done you know, in a thoughtful, stretched out process. So we've got regulation that doesn't happen on time, and we've got <coughs> regulation that doesn't exist in the existing world, that, that no one could, I, you, you, you heard the examples that my colleague from uh, Oklahoma gave you, and, and no one can argue with a lot of what he said. Um, this is not a partisan issue. The last time we reinvented government, you might recall, was when Al Gore took on this challenge as vice president for uh, uh, President Clinton and came out and, and actually had a reasoned discussion that did two things. Number one, probably not well enough taking a look at how do we deal with new regulation. And I think the first step, never mind the agency, the first step ought to be telling Congress, when you pass this law, here are the list of regulations you are telling us to adopt within this time period. So we need a little, a little training in the United States Congress about what, what our expectations are, right? Whether it's a farm bill um, that uh, Senator Ernst talked about, uh, whether it's uh, positive train control that FCC has to get approval from every tribe in America, that was the problem. We're beyond that now with positive train control. And so, so, so I guess my point is we need to have a comprehensive look at what the problems are. Mm -hmm. And the problems in many cases are right here in the United States Senate or in the Congress when we set out expectations. And I think that's what you're getting to, uh, Ms. Cast, and, and, and I really appreciate that. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't also be doing a huge project on lookbacks. Um, one of the frustrations that the American public has, rightful and, and I think meaningful frustration, is they don't know what's coming next. They don't know what's out there that's gonna get them. Um, they're going about their business without any real knowledge of what's gonna get them. And so how do we do a better job, number one, identifying what the regulatory burdens are that we're putting on the agencies to adopt regulation when we adopt legislation? Number two, what do we do to have a meaningful discussion to prevent the perfect world mentality of people who write regulation? And the third thing is, what do we do to have a meaningful look back process that is going to respond to legitimate concerns for which there is no venue at this point? I totally agree with you, doctor. Where's the venue for people to complain broadly about what this is um, other than our offices? And we'd like to see something maybe other than our offices because we would be inundated. We don't have enough staff to deal with all the concerns that'll come. And, and so I just, this is one of many, many discussions that we're gonna have, but we have to get this right. We have to make sure that whatever we do 
actually adds value to the process, actually trades, changes the process, and doesn't prolong or have unintended consequences. So um, not a partisan issue, not something that can be done quickly without really thinking about what's the problem we're seeking to solve, because there's a range of problems that we're seeking to solve. And then how can we um, come to a consensus on how we can improve it within those three categories? And I don't have a lot of time left because I've yacked on and on, which is a, a familiar place sometimes for those of us in the United States Congress. But um, I'd like just a feedback on how I've laid this issue out and whether you could debate that or, or offer some additional suggestions. Well, I think you've articulated it quite clearly. And um, you know, the cumulative impact and the, the fact that there's no venue to... I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I also want to add another dynamic to this. Everybody talks about federal regulation, but it is on top of local standards, it's on top of state standards, and that's another complication of dealing with this issue. Yeah, so I, I think um, the notion of having a venue to, to voice uh, concerns is, is an important one, um, and would look forward to working with uh, the committee on that. There's another alternative that's been proposed about the cumulative burden, which is essentially a regulatory budget that simply says, this is how much uh, burden we are going to place on uh, the American public, and if we hit that cap, it will force something to go away if we put something else in. Now, uh, the, the United Kingdom has taken a very extreme version of this with two out for every one in on business regulation, uh, but, but that's something that would be good food for thought in your deliberations on how to deal with the burden issue and force people to make trade-offs, and that's really what we want them to do. Yeah, I'd, I'd just mention your example of the charitable uh, gambling regulations. Is a great, it sounds like a great example of regulations being made in response to anecdotes about bad behavior rather than making regulations in response to actual evidence that there is a significant widespread problem with an understanding of what caused it and then a regulation that addresses that cause. So, um, yep, sounds like a, a great example of failure to ask the most fundamental question that regulators ought to ask, which also happens to be the, the question that, that uh, federal agencies tend to spend the least time on when they're doing regulatory impact analysis. That's a problem. I'm not doing it. Let me talk briefly about the venue for complaints. We have, the cap we have the technological capabilities now for taking in a lot of complaints and sorting them out and sort of figuring out what the patterns are. It's great that your office is here, but because there's no central point at this point, we don't actually know who is being, you know, when, when people ask me sometimes, well, what regulations should we fix or improve first? I can't answer that question because we don't actually have comprehensive information across all the regulations about what, in fact, people are complaining about. And what happens, actually, is your offices are some of the best uh, uh, places to get some of the interesting changes that could be made without harming the underlying goals. And so, you know, one of the things that, that that this committee or the subcommittee should consider is how to structure a central location for complaints that it doesn't have to be just restricted to federal, but it can be federal, state, and local as well, so that we have a comprehensive view across agencies. Um, uh, and I'm sorry Senator Portman left, because what I meant to say about cost-benefit analysis was really cost-benefit analysis right now is applied within an agency. It's not applied across agencies, it's not applied across the regulatory accumulation. So it's missing, it's significantly missing a lot of the key factors that your constituents are complaining about. And frankly, the place where I start on this is having started a small business at one point and sort of realized that, oh my God, you know, it's impossible for me to comply with everything I'm being asked to do. And this was a small business. I said, I can sort of sympathize and we need some way that is constructive and technological at this point to sort of handle the volume of complaints and collate them so we can see patterns. I think you raised very important questions. And again, I'm sorry for my voice, but I woke up with a cold this morning and it's cracking all over the place. But I, I think you've presented some of the challenges that are real and that need to be addressed. And I actually was in the administration when Vice President Gore launched the um, other version of NPR and went through that experience where there was a, a request for people's input uh, consistently to try to answer these questions. But the hardest question is, is when and how. And, and I used in my testimony, you know, derivatives 
were creative and exciting until all of a sudden we had a financial crisis. Drones. Who knew drones? I mean, you say, what's going? Who knew that drones, no one thought drones were a problem until they became one by falling on people's property or by interfering with commercial airlines. And we call a remotely piloted aircraft in North Dakota. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I shall, I'll, I'll try to, to follow that. But, but I think these are very important questions that Senator Langford's com subcommittee are going to be dealing with, with your help and others. And uh, I just encourage you to keep trying because they are important and they are very difficult. <laughs>